Let's spend a bit of time talking about building an effect size model. And I'm going to make some suggestions for what I think is a reasonable approach to trying to build a model to estimate the effect of x1 on some outcome y. <clears throat> um, now, I do want to stress these are suggestions. And what I mean by that is, as I've said before, there are wrong ways, but there is no one right way of doing it. So what I'm going to give you here is some points that I think are reasonable approaches and things to think about while you're building an effect size model. There, of course, I'm sure there'll be at least one or two points that can be added to the list that I don't mention. So again, I do want to stress that. These are suggestions on things that are good to think about when building an effect size model. So one of the first things that I think you're going to want to do is think about the relationship between x1, x2, up to xk, and y. So all of the variables, how do you think they might be associated? Bivariate associations, especially x1 in the outcome, and x1, x2, x1, x3, and so on. Right? So the relationships involving your variable of interest and the outcome. And you might want to consider using a DAG. And again, this is something we're not talking about explicitly in the course, but uh, something you might want to explore on your own. It's a really useful way for trying to describe the relationship between all these variables and help to decide which variables need to be included in the model and which ones uh, don't. One thing you want to do is include confounders. So if you identify variables that are confounding the relationship between x1 and the outcome, include those. We mentioned um, knowledge of confounders can come from previous knowledge, right? previous studies or literature, um, subject area knowledge, knowing about the study design. You might identify some through data exploration. And I guess I want to say it's not always clear which variables are um, confounders. Then you can include independent predictors. Underline some of these. All right, so we saw that. Um, if there's other variables that are good predictors of the outcome, even if they're not confounders, including them might decrease the standard error of B1, right, the effect you're interested in. So we also talk about reasons that you might not want to include them. If you don't need to adjust for them, it's not necessary to include for them, but um, that's something to think about. <coughs> you're probably going to want to include variables for face validity. Um, and what I mean by that is <clears throat> quite often there's certain variables that are known or believed to be related to the outcome and if you're not included in your model the validity of your model might be questioned. So quite often when looking at health outcomes age and biological sex are included in the model even if they're not really good predictors of the outcome or they're not confounders, you're probably going to want to include things like age and sex in the model just um, for validity reasons. <coughs> you want to exclude mediators. So. We talked about what mediators are. There's some variables sitting on the pathway between x1 and the outcome. We're going to generally want to exclude those. Exclude alternate measures of x1 or y. So if you have some x variable, that's another measure of x1. Right? It's measuring the same thing. Or a variable that's another measure of your outcome. Right? You don't want to include those in the model. That's going to completely distort things. We saw, so maybe I should say the words I haven't written it explicitly. 
alternate measures of x1, we often think of those as collinearity. So if a variable is so highly associated with x1 that it's uh, nearly inseparable, don't include that in the model. If x2 and x3 are collinear, <coughs> so these not being the variables of interest, but they're two other variables in your model, or sorry, two other variables in your data set, and they're so highly associated that they can't be separated. If you're going to adjust for them, use just one. So if you have two variables, again, that are so highly associated and you need to include them in your model for some reason, they're independent predictors of the outcome or they're confounders, include just one but not both of them. Include effect modifiers. Again, if they're statistically significant, and again, we don't want to get caught up on statistical significance, right? If there's statistical evidence that the effect modification um, seems to be real and not due to chance, it seems to be that there is, if you have statistical evidence that there is effect modification, and they should be conceptually sound. Again, meaning that it's not just an effect modifier that showed up as being statistically significant, but it makes sense conceptually that it would be an effect modifier. One thing that I think is always important, I don't know if this totally fits into the um, model building suggestions, but I think it's important to mention here, is acknowledge the limitations or weakness So every set of data, every model you build has some limitations. No matter how good the data collection was, no matter how great the model building is, there's always some limitations, right? So just acknowledge that they're there. Know that the model's never going to be perfect, right? We're trying to get uh, as good as we can. We might want to consider transforming. Or at least I'm going to say, or changing. Some variables. Um, so first, if the relationship is not linear, we might want to transform it. <coughs> um, or as we've seen or we'll see through the course, there might be some times where it's not just an assumption being met, but Recording a variable in a different way might make more sense. So for example, um, I'm not going to come up with a great example on the spot, but if we're looking at some health outcome, age might be an important variable to include in there. <coughs> but age might make more sense to record as something like adult or senior, right? If something that outcome tends to change when someone's a senior or not. Having the numeric age might not be as useful. Right, so the outcome might be the same for someone who's 30 or 40 or 50, right? and it might have a change when they cross that threshold. So sometimes categorizing or dichotomizing may make a bit more sense. So um, think about that, not just in terms of the assumptions, but does it make more sense to be presented that way? And then one final thing I want to stress, which is related, make sure you check the assumptions. of the model. Okay, so I, I like to do this as I'm building the model, just um, regularly checking some of the, the regression diagnostic plots, making sure the assumptions seem met, and doing it along the way. Um, one, <coughs> one reason why I do want to stress this is when you see a model fit, a, you know, um, and you see things presented in a paper, they're never going to talk about their residual plot and how they check the assumptions and what they did. They might, they might mention you know, a change that was made, 
know, transforming a variable in Y. Quite often they won't even do that. So this is really important to do, but it doesn't get much feature in the publication itself. But I do want to stress checking the assumptions, making sure they're met or reasonably met, and if not, addressing them is an important part in the model building uh, procedure. So what I'm going to do um, is just clear this off and talk a little bit about uh, a suggested approach, a way I, I think is a reasonable way to go about incorporating these ideas and trying to get to um, a final model. So let me just clear this off and get to the next set of ideas. Now that we've talked about some important considerations to make when building an effect size model, I want to talk a little bit about what I think is a reasonable approach to trying to get to building a final model to estimate the effect of some variable x1 on the outcome. So I think a good approach is first trying to decide on the confounders that you want to include in the model. Let um, me say, and the collinearity or the collinear variables to exclude. Okay. And there's a few ways to do this. You can start with a model that has the variables you believe are confounders based on prior knowledge and data exploration, and you might try adding or removing some variables from there to see um, how things behave numerically. You might just start sequentially starting with just x1 in there and adding one variable at a time that you believe might be a confounder and again seeing what happens numerically. So there's slightly different approaches, but uh, I think making a decision on what are the confounders you want to adjust for, what are collinear variables you want to make sure do not get in the model. Then I think it's a good approach to decide on any independent predictors to include. <clears throat> so up to this point, now you've decided what are the variables you need to adjust for, what are any other variables that are good at predicting the outcome that you might want to include because they're going to increase the precision of your estimate. You may want to try adding or dropping terms from here. And again, this is just a suggestion, but you might, you know, if you're not too confident that a certain variable is a good predictor of the outcome, you might want to try dropping that from the model using something like the partial left test to help you decide, is that another good predictor that should be included in your model or not? Or vice versa, you might have a variable that's not in the model, you might want to say, let me test adding it to the model and seeing, does this improve the precision of the model? Is it a statistically significant predictor? Or you know, is it behaving like a confounder? Things like these. So try and decide, what are your confounders? What are your independent predictors? I think at this point, it's good to check the assumptions. So now that you've decided some of the variables you're going to put in your model, check the assumptions, the linearity being the most important one, right? making sure that the relationship between these variables that are in the model and the outcome is linear. Then from there, I think it's good to test any reasonable interactions, right, or what we're calling effect modification terms. So um, anything that you think is biologically plausible or makes sense, you can test those. Um, a reminder that there may be certain variables that were not included as confounders or independent predictors that you might think are effect modifiers, right? They might be modifying the effect of x1 on the outcome, and you can test those, right? So again, at this point, consider if there's any effect modification terms you want to include in the model. And after you've made this decision, good to check the assumptions again. And again, just including interaction or effect modification term may have changed things in the model, but just good to verify that again that the assumptions are met. So check the assumptions and anything you want with the model fit. Right, again, do a final assessment of the model. 
and then interpret. So interpret the model, um, and I guess I should say with the limitations. So at this point, interpret it and state any limitations of the model or the data. Right? Maybe you, you didn't have certain variables recorded that you think you needed. Maybe the way variables were recorded was inadequate, like uh, in our data set, smoking, yes or no. That's a pretty crude measure of smoking. Uh, so things like these, right? Uh, just make sure that you acknowledge, here are some of the limitations of my model, and here are the interpretations of the model um, acknowledging those limitations. So again, this is a suggestion for approach. You can make tweaks to this and modifications, and it'd be a perfectly reasonable, um, well, I guess I should say, it depends on what your tweaks and modifications were. It might not be a perfectly reasonable approach, right? There are wrong ways to do it, but there are other right ways than the suggestion that I've made here. Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.